Amen. Well, guys, we're going to dive right in it. Um, um, I'm excited to be in this series. Who's been enjoying this series? He's him. Amen. It's been a great series. I've been really enjoying sharing the word. We open up by identifying who Jesus is. Pastor Andy taught us who Jesus is and how much he loves us and how much he cares for us and how much he wants to be a part of our lives. And then week two, we talked about I am the bread. He says, I'm him. If you need bread, I'm him. I am the bread of life. And we understood that he breaks bread and he has covenant and he invites us to sit at the table with him and he loves us and he wants to be with us. And then last week we talked about, I am the shepherd. If you need someone and not just a shepherd, the good shepherd. And he, he, he takes care of us and he knows our, where we hurt the most, where, where we, where we've been wounded on this journey calls life. He's prepared a table before us in the presence of our enemy. He leads us in the path of righteousness for his name. Say, he lay us down in green pastures and oh my God, he restores our soul. And so we learn that if we need restoration, Jesus stands up and says, I am him. And so we have a good shepherd who loves us. And so this week, we want to go a little deeper in he's him. And I want to talk about another I am statement. If you need to be connected, Jesus says, I am the true vine. Somebody say he's the true vine. John chapter 15, uh, verses 1 through 5 says this. I am the true vine and my father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. Every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes it so that it may bear what? Whew, I want to get to that level more fruit. Verse 3, he says, you are already clean because of the word which I have spoken to you. Abide in me and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abide in the vine, so neither can you unless you abide in me. Verse 5, I love this. I am the vine. You are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him, he bears what? For apart from me, you can do nothing. He is the true vine. It's finally springtime, and a lot of us know it's springtime because we cannot stand being outside for too long. I just had uh, someone fix me a cup of tea this morning because my voice is all itchy because pollen is all in the air, and it's miserable time for some of us. Can I get an amen? Amen. The Claritin market is blowing up off us. Claritin A through Z is just going off the shelves like crazy. And it's a miserable time. But for some others, it's an exciting time. For me, I'm kind of torn between two realities because why it's torture with the pollen. I love the fact that my grass is growing back and the bushes are blooming and the azaleas are out everywhere. I love watching all these flowers unfold because it is springtime and we We enjoy watching the new life, the life that was sleeping now is coming forth and and things that were dormant are now coming back alive. Things that were hibernating now are coming back and they're rustling around Uh, the most slithery snakes. I hate them, but uh, they they finally starting to move a little faster. So be careful. You're in Louisiana, but beautiful flowers and lots of greens makes the appearance of spring joyful and it's great. But in our text today, we see Jesus using what they knew back in time because they were in an agricultural era to where a lot of things were agricultural. So a lot of his allegories were agricultural. He used agricultural language. And he says in this region, when he said, I am the true vine, the people would have understood the context to which he was talking. They would have understood the importance of a vine. In that region, grapes are bountiful. Um, I love hanging out with Nada. She, she, they took us out to eat. Her and her son, Andrew, they're from Lebanon. Nada, Nada gave us some grape leaves. They wrapped them grape leaves. And what it's called? When it's wrapped in the grape leaves, what it's called, Andrew? I know you know. Yeah. Yeah, that, that word. And... Um, <clears throat> 
And, and in that region, they wrapped it in the great leaves. And uh, man, I love the eating Lebanese food and, and, and eating the great leaves. It's just so amazing. So in that region, they would understand the analogy better than we would uh, because the bountiful amounts of grape vines that they have in that area. Here's the first thing I want you to write down. Grape vines are bounteous plants. One vine can produce countless amounts of grapes. One vine can produce countless amounts of grapes. So if you have the vine, and it produces countless amounts of grapes. We see one vine, but one vine produces so much more. You may be one person, but you can produce so much more than just you. There's more in you than you know. There's more in you than you give credit to. There's more in you than you allow yourself to unfold here in the earth. In the Old Testament, grapes symbolize Israel's fruitfulness in doing God's work here on earth. Ezekiel lays this out in Ezekiel chapter 19, verses 10 through 11. He says this, your mother was like a vine in your vineyard. Planted by the waters. It was fruitful and full of what? Full of branches. The vine was full of branches because of abundant waters. And it had strong, what? Fit for the scepters of rulers. And its heights was raised above the clouds so that it was seen its heights with the mass of its what? See, there is a misconception about the vines. Jesus says, I am the true vine, right? And he says, we are the branches. But there's a misconception about vines. Vines don't produce the fruit. <laughs> but it's the branches that produces the fruit. The vine's sole job is to bring nourishment to the branches so the branches can produce fruit. And so if, we, if Jesus is the true vine and we are the branches, we should be producing. Fruit. Amen. So a lot of us want Jesus. Come down, Jesus. Come, Lord. You produce the fruit. God, Jesus, do it. No. And Jesus said, no, I commission you to go do it. I commission you to be the answer to the solution. I commission you to stop being so mean-spirited, not connecting with people, not building relationships, and you're robbing yourself of your sole purpose is to be the branch of the vine. The vine gives you what you need so you can give others what they need to succeed. And we're robbing people of their natural success because we are detaching ourselves from the true vine. So if there is a true vine, there must be a false vine. Look at your neighbor and say, what you connected to? Come on, ask them what they're connected to. Because what you connected to will feed what you produce. I remember after Katrina, David, after Katrina in, in New Orleans, after Katrina, when they had Katrina, I remember after the floodwaters subsided and the floodwaters went down, they had this uh, phenomenon that happened in, in Jefferson Parish. In Jefferson Parish, all these watermelons start popping up in everyone's yard. Like, it was just crazy watermelons everywhere after, like, big watermelons. You've never seen them before. But remember how th there was bodies in the water and, and, and all sorts of contaminants in this water. And, and th that water fed the ground. And, and these, these, these vines came up and began to produce the watermelons on the ground. And people were picking them up. But they were told they could not eat these watermelons because what nourished it contaminated it. And some of us are like those Katrina watermelons. We've been nourished by contaminants, by gossip, by fake stuff, by people lying, by people manipulating us. And sometimes we got to disconnect from the connect contaminants so we can be healthy. Come on, somebody. Are you with me? He's the Brian. We're the Rancis. Christ is the vine that all believers should be connected to. Some of us want to plug into the pastor. Don't plug into me. I'll mess you up. I love y'all, but I, I'm, I'm, I am a believer just like you. I'm trying to grow just like you. I have a sin nature just like you. Thank God for deliverance. Amen. I'm getting there. Just stop trying to plug into the pastor. 
plug in, Paul said, follow me as I follow. He knew the power of connection. Because if you follow me, Paul sometimes can turn into Saul. Catch me on a bad day. It's about to go down. <laughs> Look at your neighbor and say, he working on me. You see, the vine carries the nutrients to the branches. John 15, 4 says this, abide in me. That word abide is strong. He says, abide in me and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine. So neither can you unless you abide in me. Too many Christians want to just come hang out with God on Sundays. And drop him on Mondays. And try to connect again on Sundays. Guys, this is not a place where, this is not the charge station in the airport. If I waited till I came to church to charge my phone, how many of you know my phone would be dead during the week? So why do we do that with our spiritual walk? Oh, I just, if I could just wait seven days, I'm going to charge it on Sunday. And, and here it is. We're only here for 90 minutes. You only got 90 minutes to get a full charge. <laughs> Boy, are you learning something? So we have to plug in every day, every night. Some of us are, some of us are more pertinent and, and, and more uh, 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 consistent with charging our phone than we are with our souls. And we wonder why that, 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 that low battery sign always popping up on our lives. <laughs> when was the last time you plugged into God? For yourself. Just because Pastor Everett is charging his phone don't mean my phone is being charged. Come on, Dr. Calandra, whatever she does, it don't affect me. She's doing that for herself. That's for her. If I abide in, touch yourself and say me. me. And, he, and, and he abides in. Me. That's the only way. It's individual. When we get to heaven, we're, gonna stay, we're not going in two by two. We're going in one by one. And he's going to evaluate you. Not my wife, not my grandmother, not my mama, not my pastor, not my uh, connect group, my anchor group leader. No, he's going to evaluate you. Hear me online. He's going to evaluate you. And if he doesn't abide in you, it's twofold. It's twofold. There, there is a current that flows and, and it, it needs to flow the right way. It needs to flow in and out. He needs to be, you need to be in him and he needs to be in you. That's why we believe in total submersion here in baptism. Can I teach doctrine? That's why we don't sprinkle, we dip. Because baptism means fully submerged. And if you're not fully submerged, it, it, and then the literal meaning of it is this, it, it, it means to become overwhelmed with. And if you're not overwhelmed with God, you're just gracing it. Just got a little sprinkle. That ain't, that ain't gonna help you. He said in the text that we read in Ezekiel, he said, because you were with the waters, the waters was there. Now your branches and your vine is strong. Amen. Is this good? Yes. Write this down. As branches, we need the true vine. So separation is not an option. Yes. There was an old song they used to sing. I need the oh, I need the Every hour I need thee, oh, bless me now, my Savior, I come to thee. How many of you need him? I need him. I can't live without him. Every hour I need him. I need him to govern my children. I need him to ease my troubled mind. I need him 
When I get a bad doctor's report, I need him. When the finances don't line up, I need him. When I'm holding on to faith, I need him. When I don't see what he promised, I need him. So separation for me is not an option. It's not an option. As the deer panted for the water, so my soul longed after thee. You alone are my heart's desire, and I long to worship thee. We have to understand that we have to have a desperation for God. Say this with me. Say separation isn't an option. It's not an option. I need God. I can't do it without him. I've tried. I've tried to do it on my own. I know what it's like to try to make things happen for my family and almost lose it all. As a matter of fact, I've lost it all. And God has always been there standing. Just say, connect back with me. Connect back with me. In our text today, I, I'm a slave to the text. In our text today, we see two types of pruning or separation, two types. And, and you're either, you're going through one of the two. There's two that's in our text. John chapter 15, verse 2, he says, every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. That's one pruning. And every branch that bears fruit, he prunes it so that it may bear much fruit. There's two types of pruning, two types of separation. Uh, The definition of pruning is this. It's to trim a tree, a shrub, or a bush by cutting away dead or overgrown branches or stem. Watch this. Especially to increase fruitfulness and growth. What, What am I saying? Some of us have dead branches on our lives. Just, just dead and hanging on. I remember we, at my first house that I purchased, I had all sorts of citrus trees. And I'm young with a house, should, shouldn't have had it, should, shouldn't have had these. My dad, I bought my family's house and my dad took care of these trees. And I always used to wonder why we always had bags of oranges all over the place. I never understood that. So when we moved there, we never would take the oranges off the tree. Well, by year two, the tree stopped producing oranges. It was because I left too many dead things connected to it. How many of us are not producing because we're dragging around dead weight? Oh, my God. Y'all know the people that you call and they always negative. But I love them. They love they don't love me. If they love me, they'll love who I love. (laughs) Sometimes you got to prune those things. And then there's another separation. Sometimes you, this is the problem. How did they become dead? It was they were producing fruit, but they never gave it away. We can't keep coming to church to get fat on our own. We produce fruit so we can feed others. It's not for me. It's not for me. Because if I keep hoarding it up for myself, I love the, uh, we, we, we went through, we, we talked about the Exodus. We went through that early this year in our series. And we talked about how he gave him manna every day. And he would say, at the end of the day, throw away that manna you got. Because if you kept it, the Bible says it began to rot in their hand. Why? Because there, morning by morning, new mercies I see. Give us this day our daily bread. And so why is that? It's because I have to be a distribution center of God. God's grace, God's goodness, God's mercy, because he can't give me more if I'm not passing anything off. And some of us want to just, it come to me and it stops with me. No, you got to keep passing it on. And we got to pass peace. We got to pass joy. We got to pass hope. We got to pass love. We got to pass charity. We have to pass unity. We have to pass compa- compassion. We have to pass grace onto others. But we want to be hoarders of the fruit. God called you to be a fruit store where we're giving it away. 
not just hoarding things. That, that's what your finances, you got to make wise investments. The Bible says he don't make wise investments. Take that, that he has and give it to those that are investing well. Why? Because it's a principle of reciprocity. You, if you hold on to it, it's nothing. But if you release it, it becomes so much more. Yes. Tithing is not about the repetition of it or the religion of it. It's about the principle of it. Yes. It can God trust you to distribute what he gives to you? That's what it's all about. Are you learning something, church? Yes. Which are you? Are you the one that's hoarding fruit? Or are you the one allowing God to cut you to produce more fruit? You have to answer that question for yourself. You have to be willing to say, God, because pruning hurts. Some of you right now are in a pruning season. God knows I've been there. I was talking with my overseers on a Thursday. I mean, I was in tears. I, whenever I'm with my overseers, I always start crying because they get on my nerves. They always, they know what button to press. Them jokers press that button right, just that right button. And man, I just started crying. And uh, one of my overseers was like, Pitts, this is good. You're in a good season. God is cutting back. So he can spring forth. And then we just started rejoicing. We started rejoicing. Because no one, I mean, no one wants to be cut down. We're going to talk about that next week. No one wants to go to the cross. But everyone wants a resurrection. Everybody want to go to the next level. Everyone wants to post what they're doing on Instagram, but no one wants to be cut back. We have to dig deep roots in holiness, deep roots in righteousness, deep roots in integrity. We have to carry that. John 15, write, write this down, write this down. The vine dresser has an ex expectation for every branch to produce fruit. Remember, Jesus says, I am the vine. God is the vine dresser. He the ones that come and cut and take care of. Let me stop and pause and take an excursion. It's not your job to kick out the dead branches. It's God's job to do that. Because you mean. Prove it, Pastor. The Bible says the heart of a man is deceitfully wicked. Who can understand it? You don't even know. Paul say, I go to do good. Evil is present. Oh, what a wretched man am I. And that's Paul who wrote two thirds of the New Testament. So what makes you that good? I know you have to know yourself. I know me. I will cut somebody. <laughs> I was telling uh, one of our uh, pastors here. I was like, I have to be very careful. Because I know a lot, and I know a lot, and I know how to hurt people. I'm a master at it. I'm really good at it. And I pray every day that God keep that side of me down. Because when people hurt me, I can hurt them worse. Do you know yourself? Don't you know you have a retaliation in you too? <laughs> That's why we got to allow the Holy Spirit to speak through us and that's where humility comes in somebody say humility john 15 8 says this my father is glorified by this that you bear much fruit and so prove to be my disciples we have to bear what much fruit and so prove to be my disciples he says you shall know my disciples by the love that they show one to another love is one of those things. When we are connected to the vine, we produce consumable fruit. But a disconnected branch can produce fruit. I've seen it. It can't. Like if the branch is bent, it can produce, uh, it can produce fruit. But it's not edible. <laughs> it's bitter. It's bitter. You have to be connected so you can produce edible fruit. I want people to want to partake of my life. The Bible says, it, it, uh, God says, oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. But when he tastes y'all, it's bitter. So they don't want your God. 
Watch this. People don't hate your God, they hate you. But you represent God. So what are people tasting when they taste your life? Some of you need to go back and represent yourself to, to people. Say, man, I heard this ball, great man preaching. And I'm sorry, I was hanging on by a limb, so I, my, my, my fruit was a little bitter. I want to get at another go. So you can taste and see that the Lord is good. We don't want to turn people away. We want people to turn to God. And our lives is a result of that. Come on up, team. Watch what Galatians says a disconnected branch produce. Galatians 5, 9, 3, 2, 21. It says, now the deeds of the flesh are evident, which are immorality, impurity, sensuality, adultery, sorcery, enmities, strife, jealousy, outbursts of anger, disputes, dissension, factions, envying, drunkenness, carousing, and other things like these of which I forewarn you, just as I've forewarned you, that those who practice such things will not what? Now, the works of the flesh, when you're not connected spiritually, the works of the flesh, immorality, impurity, sensuality, idolatry, sorcery, enmity, strife, jealousies, outbursts of anger, disputes, dissensions, factions, envy, drunkenness, carousing, and things like these. Who, 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 don't show me your hands, but who find themselves in that text? That's a sign you're disconnected. You can't control your temper, you're disconnected. You're overwhelmed with lust, you're disconnected. Well, pastor, you don't understand. This has been my struggle forever. Check your connection. And like I said, only if, only if I could get the pastor on the phone. No, you don't need me on the phone. Jesus is on the main line. If you Facebook Jesus, he'll Facebook you back. I'm just saying. <laughs> You need to plug into Jesus. To produce fruit has been unintentionally. Let, 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 me, let me correct some bad theology. All this time when we're talking about producing fruit, most people, your mind instantly went to soul winning. That's a part of it. Actually, it's a product of producing fruit. It's not the fruit. We want to eat. We want the bit. I won. I won. I won. No, that's God's fruit. All you did was produce the fruit. What is the fruit that's going to allow souls to be won? Watch this. The one, number one, good character is a fruit that is produced. Galatians 5, 22, 23 says this, but the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such, there is no law. Watch this. If we don't have good character, we, watch this. Here go my southern vernacular. We ain't got no fruit. If your carrot is shot, check your connection. The, another thing that is produced, joy is a fruit that is produced. Joy is a fruit. So when I have good character, people want to come see where that character come from. So they, the soul is one. When I have joy, people want to be around people with joy. So it produces a soul one. John 15, 11 says this. These things I have spoken to you so that my may be where and that your may be made who wants to be full of joy that's a fruit I get joy I get joy my, I, I, when I'm connected joy is just there am I saying that I have it all together all my life is perfect no I'm up here hurting right now but guess what I got joy <laughs> because the external watch this happiness is produced by external factions joy is produced by something on the inside 
Joy comes from something on the inside of me because I could be in a room full of chaos, but I still have a big smile. And people always say, Pastor Fitz, you always have joy. You always, you always have. We, we, I had a guest here today that, 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 that came just because I cut up in Starbucks. I walk around like I own the place. I do. It's pretty bad. Pretty, every, every new manager they get, I break in. Uh, Gabby, I come to they, I run their place too. I run it. Mix it up, it's mine. Every customer come in, they're my customers. <laughs> Why? Because I'm going to have joy. Joy. Another fruit that is produced, love is a fruit that is produced. John 15, 10 says, if you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love just as I have kept my father's commandments and abide in his love. He'll abide. You have to abide. That word abide isn't a short term thing. It's not short term. Abide means I'm here. You can't get rid of me. I'm here. Remember I said, I'm the bread of life, which means he break the bread and he says, I'm making a covenant with you. I'm going to be with you forever. As Calandra said, daddy going to be with me forever. Daddy, daddy, he's going to be there. He's going to be there with you forever. He's not going to leave. He's going to abide with you. But the question is, will you abide with him? Or are you going to be an emotional child? Anyway, you have kids that when you're giving them everything they want, they just love on you. Then the moment you say no, they throw a tantrum. All my parents give me a what, what? Y'all know what I'm talking about. What, what? Y'all just want to just take them out. Just like, you, you, you come with me now. Start talking like, <laughs> talking like the Terminator. Now you come. And we do the same thing to God. We're a bunch of small brats. God heal me. Woo, hallelujah. Yeah, yeah. Come on. Praise the Lord. God didn't heal me this time. We have to abide in his love. I told you the good shepherd says, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. Isn't there another path, God? Why do we have to walk through there? Isn't there another path? No, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. I'm walking with you. You just have to go through it. So he's a God on the mountain. He's the same God in the valley. He's God when you're, when you're good. He's God when you're not so good. What's, the, what, what's, what's one of God's nature? He's I, I, immutable. He, he can't change. God cannot change. He is good and he can't be anything else. I don't care what the Mormons tell you. He can't be anything else. All God is good. So if all he is good, evil can't be birthed from him. Can I get an Amen. The last one is this. Answered prayer is a fruit that is produced. John 15, 7 says, If you abide in me and my words in you, ask whatever you wish. Ask whatever you wish. Isn't that a bold statement? And he says, and it might be done. There is a 50-50 chance that it will be done. What that says? Can y'all correct the preacher up here? It will. It will be done. How? When you're connected. Now, watch it is. Here it is. It's not the way you will it to be done. It's the way he will it to be done. It's his, his will is going to be done regardless. It, like I said, he's God on a mountain. We can't just celebrate the God on a mountain. We got to celebrate the God in the valley too. His will. Let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven I love John chapter 15 and Eugene's Peterson message Bible it says this you didn't choose me remember this is Jesus talking you didn't choose me remember I chose you you nasty lying adultering immoral no integrity bad character sour face I still chose you 
and put you in this world to bear fruit. Watch this, fruit that won't spoil. As fruit bearers, whatever you ask the Father in relationship to the vine, he gives you. So if I'm connected to the vine that says I'm healed, guess what the branch is going to produce? If I'm connected to the vine that says I'm going to have peace, guess what the branch is going to produce? <laughs> oh, come on. What are you plugged in? Just look at what you're producing. You'll know what you're connected to. And in different seasons, you need to connect to different aspects of God because he chose you. Remember? Do you remember who you used to be before he chose you? I do. I don't forget. I don't let myself forget. That old song, Jesus, I'll never forget what you've done for me. I, re I remember. <laughs> I was a, yeah. <laughs> I was a booger. <laughs> and he still chose me. He chose you. Stand to your feet. Stay connected to the true vine and embrace the pruning process. Being connected to the true vine will produce fruit. Who wants to be fruitful? Let me say, yeah, who wants to be fruitful? Amen. I want to pray for you. Every head bowed, every eye closed. As I was preaching, I felt some of you right now saying, man, I disconnected. I'm not connected and, and I'm running low. I don't know if I can face tomorrow. I've been having these crazy thoughts. I'm crying, I don't even know why I'm crying sometimes. I, I don't even know what's going on, but I know I'm disconnected, but I wanna reconnect this morning. If that's you, I want you to raise your hand. I wanna plug in, thank you, thank you. I need my, my pastors and leaders looking at the hands going up. Thank you. Come on, put your hands up. I want to be connected. Thank you. There's a second group. There's some dead things that's connected to you, but you know it's going to be a hard time because you, you love them. You care. You've got an attachment to it, but you have to make a tough decision to go through pruning. Go through pruning. You have to make that tough decision. And there's a phone call you're going to have to make as soon as you leave this church. There's, there's boyfriends you got to break up with, girlfriends you got to let go. There's, there's friends you got to say bye to. There's, they're just, you're on a different journey. You're on a different path. You give them all the, hey, look, either you come with me. I, I never forget when I got saved. My, I mean, I had been with my wife. She's my high school sweetheart. As a matter of fact, I stalked her with a stalking type of love. And I remember when I gave my life to Jesus, I gave her an ultimatum. I said, either you come to Jesus with me or we're going to have to break up. And she was like, I still want a club. And I was like, well, it's over. I hung up the phone and cried like a baby. Thank God that a day later, she decided to connect again. Because God knows I don't know what I was going to do. But just make the decision. Sometimes the best decision is to let it go and let the vine dresser deal with them. If that's you and you feel like that's a tough decision, I want you to raise your hand. Tough decision. I see you. Thank you. I see you. Thank you. If you raise your hand, I want to pray for you. Someone is by you. Someone is with you. Um, Stay by that person that you were praying for. Stay by them. And I want you to begin to pray with them right now in this moment. Just like it's springtime, it's a new season for you. He's going to turn your grave into a garden. He's going to turn your mourning into dancing your sorrow into joy. And this is your season to produce. It's your season to produce. It's your season to produce. 
I love Jesus talking to his disciples after he had the encounter with the Samaritan lady at the well and their backs is to the city and Jesus is facing Samaria and they're talking to him about all the problems that could have happened and why he's talking to this lady, things going on. And Jesus said, why you're complaining, if you turn around, the harvest is right, is ready. Why? Because she went back with her fruit of joy, her fruit of forgiveness, her fruit of hope. And the city was like, ooh, I want to partake of that. And there's nations on the inside of you that's waiting for you to represent that fruit. So right here in this moment, let's build it, man. Father, I thank you, God. I thank you, God, that you are here, God, that you are the vine dresser. Jesus, you are the vine and we are the branches. And Father, I pray now, God, that those that felt disconnected, God, that they would understand that you are just ready for them to reconnect. God, you will mend the broken branches, God. You said in your word, you are near to the broken heart. So, Father, I pray now that you would mend that place. Let them find joy and restoration in this moment. I declare that under the anointing of the Holy Spirit. I speak prophetically. God, the dead things are going to come back to life. God, I breathe like Ezekiel breathed over the valley of dry bones. I breathe into this space that dead things will begin to rise and live again. God, I pray now, God, that they will go from death to life now in the name of Jesus, that they'll go from mourning to dancing, from sorrow to joy, from graves to gardens. Now in the name of Yeshua, God, I pray now, God, that you will embolden them, that they'll choose the vine over the world, God, that they will cut off the things that are not like you that we read in Galatians chapter 5, that they'll cut off immorality, they'll cut off sensualities, they'll cut off anger, and they'll cut off bitterness, they'll cut off unforgiveness, God, and I pray, God, that they'll put on joy, peace, love, gentleness, kindness, and the Holy Spirit. God, I pray, God, that you will restore everything that the worms and the, the canker worm and the pummel worm try to extract and I pray that joy will come now God in the name of Jesus that our joy may be full thank you for choosing us oh God and today we say we love you